welcome to Public Arts. Tonight we're streaming live for the Artist Talk and Tour by Amy J. Dick for her exhibition Dichotomy. I'm Janice Potter, Gallery Manager. At Pomo Arts, we have started an internal organization-wide mandatory process of equity, diversity, and inclusion training, along with organizational decolonization practices training in order to help us as we work towards developing a respectful territorial acknowledgement. We recognize this is just the first step and that we have a long way to go, including building, uh, the building of respectful relationships with local Coast Salish nations in our community. As we start the evening, I'd like to express gratitude to uh, Como Arts Board of Directors the City of Port Moody, the Province of British Columbia through their support with our with the gaming program, community gaming, and uh, the Government of Canada for their support through the Canada Summer Jobs Program and our um, and Pella Estates. Um, thank you for joining us for the third in our series of virtual artist talks for our January exhibitions. It's a pleasure to have Amy here in the gallery to tour you through Dichotomy. Amy J. Dick's interest in art was established early on as she has pursued and she has pursued it consistently throughout her life, especially when the demands on her time grew more intense. Building on a simple certificate in design studies from Kwantlen University College, Amy is largely a self-taught artist who has leaned heavily on research, reading, and studying the works of important artists. Birthed from a lived experience, her artwork is a unique mix of representational and expressionism and strives to express something deeper in the human experience than can be observed with thought by the trained eye. Amy explores what it feels like to be human alive with all the vulnerability, yearning, and resilience and complexity inherent in us. Thank you for being here tonight and welcome to Amy J. Dick. Hi everyone. So glad you can come. I know there's a bunch of my friends and family out there. So hello to all of you. Um, and thank you so, so, uh, thank you so much to Comarts for hosting me. I so appreciate being and it's an honor to have a show. And uh, I'm hoping to keep this within the 40 minutes that, that I'm planning to do, but the one time that I'll talk and talk and talk is when I'm talking about my art, so we'll see how this goes. Um, <laughs> first of all, I thought I, I've got my notes here, and I might refer to them once in a while. And this body of work here is, is a collection of collages and paintings of women that are referencing her, um, her depth, her vulnerability, her strength, and uh, what it feels like for them to be living and, and all the complexity that it is in being alive. And so, for context, um, several years ago, I started creating figures. I started pulling away from the convention, making figure paintings, um, just as the way you see people, uh, just as you know, the, the flesh and the pose that we see. And I, um, <laughs> this is so weird. And, and I started to think about people as more. Um, more complex, and, and what happened is about four years ago, I landed in a wheelchair, and when I was dealing with this debilitating illness, I was dealing, I was learning how to, to live with this complexity and this my new lived experience, and and um, realizing at the same time of wrestling and buddy up against the, uh, the tendency of the human tendency to flatten people into what we need to see of them, and so I I spent a while just digging into my practice and exploring the different ways that all the different complexities that I was experiencing in my own, my own life, and what it was like to be dealing with an illness, um, how you know, all the things that I was facing in the midst of that, all the things I was carrying uh, because of that and that maybe caused that, um, all the fears and anxieties and stories and histories, and I, I found it really fascinating to explore all the things that I was carrying inside one body. And, and what I found really amazing actually is at the time that I was when I was first in my wheelchair, a lot of people would come to me and tell me their stories of their own 
histories and their own battles and their own uh, all the things that you would never know when you see them at first glance. Uh, and I just I, I loved knowing how much was in a person and how much there was to explore. So this body of work was really just my exploration of all the different parts and layers and aspects that can reside inside a, a human body and a human experience. And, and I wanted to know what that could look like. And I wanted to know of all these different parts of me that I was wrestling with and all the feelings that I was having in, my, in the midst of my um, trauma, I guess, or pain, could, could kind of come to terms with each other and learn to work with each other. And so a lot of this work is me trying to work that out. Uh, what I do with my art a lot is Sometimes I use art to just process stuff, and sometimes I use art to, to kind of create for myself what I need the world to be or what I need for my life to be. So you'll see a lot of that in the work, and I kind of trying to work things out as I, as I go through the series here. All, all this work, almost all of it was created uh, in 2021, so it's the tail end of 2020. And uh, we're going to start touring around. So this piece here uh, is called Creatures of the Night, and really, it's, it's about, um, it's really about embracing these layers of the self and making space for them. Uh, the, you'll see there's all the different kind of legs and arms and parts of the person. They're all kind of meant to be part of her and they're all kind of meant to look a little bit separate. Like there's a bit of a tension between, you know, does it belong, doesn't it belong? Is it, um, you know, there's parts of them that are a mess and parts of them that are, that are more complete. There's parts of them that are looking formed and round and some of them that are flat and more abstract and I really loved playing with how they can all kind of live in one person I guess and how and how that reflects the types of things that I was exploring in in my experience and and the people around me that were talking about the sorts of things that they've experienced when they had gone through a painful thing. Um, I, I put rats in here specifically um, <laughs> for, for, for a couple reasons. Uh, one of which I mean my, my kids have had pet rats and and I wasn't expecting it, but I kind of grew attached to them. They're just these little, <laughs> these these little things, and they and they and they're smarter than you think they are, and they're they love cuddles, and and it was um, a bit of a surprise for me to to get attached to these little creatures. And the funny thing is that we would show my daughter, um, who loved them dearly, she would grab her rats whenever there was a, a company, and she'd run out, uh, grab it from the the, um, the pen, and bring it out on her chest, and she'd show them off with so much pride. And half the time, people would recoil with disgust that there was a rat in the house. <laughs> and the other half the time, people were open-minded. And I thought it was really interesting that, that these, these rats that I had come to find sweet uh, um, were also very misunderstood. That most people, or so many people, just despise them kind of out of instinct because of how what we've thought about them and what we've been conditioned to think about them and the kind of trouble they get into in the wild. Mm. And so I really like the idea of having them in this painting and in another piece over there as a way of representing that part of us that maybe is misrepresented, that maybe is misunderstood um, either by us or by other people, and that having that still be part of us as well. I've incorporated a bit of, of um, sort of some monstrous shapes in there. I think um, one of the things that I realized when I, when I got sick, I got really sick really fast. And so I'm ha the thing is, what happens really fast is that you're faced with a lot of emotions that maybe you didn't expect right away. And so you have to see them, you have to see them a lot more clearly than you would if you kind of eased your way into something. And so I ended up feeling, you know, all these awful thoughts and all these awful feelings that end up feeling kind of monstrous or evil or bad. And so I would, I would have, and I'd also think about my body as this monstrous thing that wouldn't cooperate, it wouldn't do what it was supposed to do. And so I've got a lot of these monstrous type themes through this whole body of work where I'm exploring that part of ourselves that maybe doesn't obey or isn't pretty or um, isn't even understood. The sort of the monstrous forms are kind of more vague and confusing. Uh, they're a little bit less predictable and they're less understood in the way that you know round figure would be. And so there's some of them in this piece right here. This next piece here I'm going to talk about is called Elevate. And it's uh, one of a couple of experiments I did with resin windows. I don't know if you can see very clearly 
uh, through the through the video, but there's there's these these pockets in the in the piece that are actually like a see-through window, where I I've cut out holes in the cradle board, and I filled it with resin, <laughs> and then I sanded it down, and then I you know painted the rest of the painting around those pockets, and I and I did that um, as because I was really enjoying this idea of creating works that allowed us to see inside people, not just the the visual part of somebody that you can see by looking you know looking at someone you see in a, in the hall or or at a store, and they're just there, but I like the idea of having a glimpse into somebody, and so I was trying to create this sort of internal world or these internal spaces, and so I, I love the idea of making these little windows that allow us to see actually into the piece. There's actually some of this, these hands up here are also on resin as well, so you could see, if I lifted up the piece, I could wave to you through the other side of it. Um, and this piece is inspired by, actually I'll pull back and talk about my process real quick. This piece here, is like any of the other ones where I started off by creating. Um, I, usually, when I when I start making work, I get a little bit in my head, right? So one of the ways that I get out of being in my head is I will start to collage or experiment with things that don't take a lot of time. So one of the things when you're when you're somebody like me who creates a lot of work and it's highly realistic, and I want it to be, it can take hours to get you know an arm painted or a face painted, and so it's, it takes a lot of. Um, it's pretty painful to decide that that arm or that face doesn't actually work there and you have to get rid of it. So one of the things that I do to, to uh, navigate some of that is to start using photography and paint on little pieces of paper that I don't care too much about and mess around with them. And we're going to go and look at those in a minute. But what this one here is based on one of those studies. So I used to do these studies and I'd kind of pound them out and see what I, see what I like and compare these ideas with each other. And then if I feel like there's something more to be said or something, will feel good on a big scale, then I move to something like this. And this is this is based on that as well. I put some wings in this piece uh, because it's funny because some of the things that I add, I put in there intuitively, so I don't always know why they need to be there, but they start to feel right. And then the more I work, the more these pieces start to emerge in other pieces, these kind of aspects. So I've got some animal parts popping up here and there in the work as a way of, I, I, I think just because you know, as my work was less, as my body was less controlled, I was starting to explore how it started to feel more animalistic, sort of more chaotic, and I, and I was um, feeling like somehow animals fit that bill a little bit more, so I put some of those in the pieces, I think. I've got all these arms reaching around here, and there's actually a theme going on with the arms in, in the show as well, so as you move through the, the show, you'll see um, there's a sense, one of the things, let me think if I can word this properly, one of the things that I was exploring was, you know, when I was hit with this illness and I was in a bit of a crisis and I couldn't drive my kids to school and I couldn't, there's so many things I couldn't do and it was very hard and, and I felt very, I, I realized how quickly I could turn on my own self so I was, I became really uh, nasty to myself and, and I was also learning about the need to, to have self-care and compassion so I, I was noticing the dichotomy or the tension between how easy it is to turn against oneself, but also how important it is to take care of oneself. So I've got lots of different pieces where there's arms kind of wrapping around somebody, and sometimes you won't be able to tell whether they're hurting the person or they're kind of there you know, maliciously, and sometimes you'll be able to see that they're actually there for care. This is partly through the process, so I think there's a bit more care in, in, this, in this piece here. I wanted to say something about the color red real quick. Um, red is used quite extensively in this body of work. And it's important for a couple of reasons. One is that it's in contrast with the pink that I have here. And so because the work is called, the, the body of work is called dichotomy, it's about holding those contrasts within the same person. So one of the ways I've illustrated those contrasts is through the colors, so red and pink, which to me are contrast, they contrast symbolically. Red is a very powerful, forceful type of color. And pink seems to be more delicate and fragile. And I was finding ways to pull those into the same figure. I've also shown in a lot of the work here, there's um, some of the dichotomies are evident through the flat and the round forms that are contrasting, and so through some of the, um, the abstract and the realism that are kind of contrasting and all in the same person. And the color red is really about me working on embodying strength and power in the midst of my body choosing to not be powerful at all. So it's kind of a, a way of, I guess, creating strength. This piece here um, called Dragonfly 
this was one of the last pieces that I made actually and it it's a little different than the others in the sense that it has um, all the others or almost all the others have blank space or they're in some sort of a floating space because I felt like my, my figures needed to be in a sort of separate bubbles for a while where they're kind of contemplating and figuring out who they were and then in here I felt like my figure was starting to need to emerge into the real world. And so this piece here is, is, an, is my experiment in what it would be like to have this figure be able to come out into the world in, that exists. And this landscape here is actually from Kelowna. <laughs> and I know there's a few of you from Kelowna here, so <laughs> you might recognize it. <laughs> and, and actually this piece, you'll, you'll notice actually in other pieces around the room. So here is a full landscape, but even in other pieces in the room, you'll see little windows. So I've got a window or a glimpse into some nature or some landscape, and that's my experimentation with pulling some of the real world into this experience of being with this person. And what's it like to have a little bit of that, you know, the sky or a little bit of the grass or a little bit of the, the window around. Actually, I'll share something funny about the dragonflies real quick. Um, this piece, I, I was just working on the figure in this dragonfly this painting here with the red, and um, I, I didn't know what it needed. I was working on the figure, and I was working on the landscape, and I was just kind of sitting with it, not sure what it needed. And then um, this dragonfly flew into my studio, and it got trapped, and it was banging around, and it was very big, and I didn't know what was going on. And so when I figured out it was a dragonfly and it wasn't there to kill me, I, I shut off all the lights and, and kind of guided it out. And then it occurred to me that maybe maybe that was the right thing for the painting. So I, I had thought, I'd done a bit of research on the meaning of dragonflies with significance, and it had some significance in in regards to resilience and rebirth, or just some of the things, the themes that I was working with. So I just ended up putting about I don't know, 12 dragonflies in the painting as a way of building on those themes. and. Um, giving her some interaction with the creatures of the real world. And so here we're coming across a lot of the small studies that, um, that I've started doing. So I mentioned earlier that I'll sit down and explore for a while and just play with the photography, uh, with paints, with collage, and see what comes together. It's more of an intuitive process. And, and that's what these works are here. Um, the one yeah, on the top there, she's embracing that little figure, which actually is made out of sandpaper. I was, I was kind of working, I've got this, this other theme where these little creatures are almost like monster babies that are showing up in a lot of the works. And I like the idea of part of these, some of these creatures being kind of rough or, or harder to deal with or have around, but they're still kind of allowed to be there. And so that, that little baby, I guess I'll call it, is, is made of and this one here, yeah, this is another one, the one, another one of the windows. I think it's one of the first ones where I put a little window in where I was exploring this idea that there was this figure and she was wrestling and she was learning to take care of herself and learning to be kind and learning to manage all these feelings and these, these uh, the complexity of having a body that doesn't work or, or a, a life that doesn't do what you want it to do. And, um, and all these arms are kind of all trying to do something. They're kind of busily running around and, and grabbing and reaching and, and protecting at the same time. And I think you'll, you'll notice if you, um, if you see it, there's a, there's a bit of a theme with the legs in here too. Just a little fun fact um, that a lot of the figures here will have hands that are, that are functional and maybe attached to the, the body, but there's a lot of them that will have legs that are either all kind of tied up in knots or disconnected from the from the torso or flattened, kind of like doll legs or, or toy legs. And that's just a, my own kind of reference to, um, to the way my body's working and my own feelings about my body as I, as I work. And here, um, this piece here called Dichotomy 10 is one of the first pieces I did where I was exploring this idea of, of the self and whether or not it was um, out to, to hurt the self, whether or not we were gonna lash out and be ma mad at or angry at or damage the self or whether we were out to care for the self. And I like that there's this ambiguity because I was really wrestling with my own feelings of whether it was okay to be somebody who was vulnerable or whether it was okay to be somebody who was, who felt broken or things weren't working and how, you know, did I feel shame about that or could I find a way to just look out for myself? And so this, this piece was my question, I guess, on whether or not I could 
look out um, whether I was going to take care of myself or whether I was going to keep lashing out and being angry that I wasn't, um, <laughs> wasn't working the way I expected. studies in the corner here. Um, the top one has actual photo evidence of my daughter's pet rat. <laughs> His name is Kiki. And, uh, and I've got the figure just kind of, her legs are all kind of in knots and these little, these little rats are popping out. And again, it's that sort of idea of the expect, of, of maybe something that we expect to be a certain way, but it's just not quite what we, not quite that way. You know, there, there's this misunderstood creature and, and uh, and I like that there's affection that she's showing towards these creatures and that they're part of her. And maybe there's something about that that feels disgusting or gross, but it's also part of her. And so there's an acceptance that happens anyway, which is something that I'm still working on, <laughs> learning how to, to take on as a life lesson. Uh, the piece below it is um, actually very similar to the one beside it. I'm just going to back up because they're, they're related. The one on, the, on this on my left here is called Dichotomy 17, and it's, it's a little study that I did. I, I used a real piece of bark on her head, and I just I just kind of like the sort of natural element, the sort of earthy aspect where you know there's something about her that's connecting to nature. And I've been playing with that in different pieces here, um, trying different things where I'm sanding parts off the legs off and exploring with there's a bit of gold. And I I use the, this study as a way of exploring my medium a little bit, playing with gouache paint trying to figure out um, what it will do and not do. And, and I love collage because you can just suddenly put something together real quick, write with something else, and immediately get an, a feeling about what it, what it means or what it reminds you of. So I use, use that as kind of a quick way to check uh, and see if I can evoke feeling through it. And then I'll make something bigger. And so here is a piece that I've made bigger. And I've tried to mimic the bark up here on the sort of, I guess, the faux bark <laughs> piece that I've made out of acrylic at the top, because uh, I didn't really know that I could get a, a large piece <laughs> that big somewhere. So I've got that here, and I've got a lot of the arms that are hanging out on this figure. Um, it's a theme that I have, I actually haven't quite figured it out, but many of my figures have a lot of hands and arms, and they're always doing and reaching and striving. And I think maybe that's actually why there's something about this, this feeling of what I experience the suffering. I think a lot of us experience the suffering and it's really hard for us to settle into it. And so when I was faced with my own, I guess, trials, I found that I was spending a lot of my energy being busy and fighting and trying and striving and wrestling. And so I think that that's what the hands are about, is this, this sort of sense of needing to reach and try and fight and, and do. And so you'll see a lot of that in the work. I've got a little plant in her, in her hands here, and she's kind of trying to coax it, coax it to life. I like the sort of symbiotic relationship between this character, that this figure that is, I, I believe, like a, a realistic representation of, of people, even though it looks kind of obscure and strange. I love this idea of that being in, in interacting with the real world and seeing how if they fit and how they work. So there's little moments of that throughout the show. Two more pieces here, uh, just two more studies. These are some of the studies I did towards the end of the year where I was playing a little bit more with uh, materials, where I would start playing with uh, how to incorporate paint in new ways to, to the studies. And so I've got some backgrounds I was exploring with the gouache, where I kind of smear it a little bit first before I started adding my characters. I've got some um, oil paints that I've spread on some plastic and then played with layering that over top of the figures in certain ways to provide, um, I guess, some more mystery or, or atmosphere to them. I'm trying to make, find a way to make them feel more nuanced. And that's kind of what I'm exploring with, with these uh, layers. And also to give them a sense of place or background, a sense, a sense of space. So they're not just floating in their own kind of world, but there's some sense of context. So I'm playing with that a lot here. 
Um, and again, this is this is the first time in this in this little study here that that a little kind of monsterish <laughs> creature that that popped up. Um, I think it was made out of a, a lizard that I found on, online, a, a double-tailed lizard that I that I cut up and and made into this little monster. And I've got this figure, and she's she's got sort of this kind of tangle in her legs, but there's a strength coming back to her. And this is actually this piece I made at a time when I. Um, Fairly recently, I was able to, to learn. I was able to walk again, so I was getting more resilience and strength, and so I was starting to learn how to find that. Even though I was, I had been finding a lot of internal strength, and I was resting a lot internally. At this point, I'd been, I'd been actually, my body had started to listen, listen to me, and I was starting to actually get physical strength back. So I was exploring this idea of having these figures walking and moving and standing and moving through a, a ground and finding the way through, fighting the way through. We have a cluster of these four little studies here, and these are some of the first four that I did in the whole series when I was just exploring what could be done with the figures when I cut them apart and moved them around in new ways and introduced them to other sorts of shapes and other sorts of forms and abstract things. The abstract things are, to me, in some ways, sort of these unknown parts of the cell. So the, the, the realism or, the, or the, the form part or maybe things that we know or that we understand that we see and we kind of get. And then the abstracted shapes or the, um, the ones that are less obvious or a little bit more mysterious to us, maybe the parts of us that are, we don't quite get or that other people don't quite get or we don't quite understand but we're kind of still having to work with because they're all jumbled up there. This one here is the study that I did from that bigger piece we talked about earlier in the show. And uh, this one we'll see a little bit later, the larger, the larger version of this, this one here that will be called Shadow, which is in another, another spot here. And I just, I really enjoy just playing with the different layers of, how, like how many different layers of the self might there be? And, and are, these, are these ones, are they tense? Are they see-through? Are they, are they a little bit animalistic? There's a bit of, there's some spots here that you can see that maybe remind me of like a lizard or, or a zebra, maybe not a zebra, but a cheetah or something that kind of pulled in some of those elements. Um, there's more of these graphic lines that are a bit more, um, more graphic that I like, that, that, that are more contrasted to the softer form. And then these three here are some small studies that I decided to try painting. Um, again, you'll see some some references to these little babyish, monstery creatures that are in this one here. Now, I have two kids. I don't want more, even though I love them. But for some reason, I, a lot of my work has been coming out with these sort of these small creatures that are that are that seem to be babies, and it's something to do with. I think the smaller or the younger parts of the self maybe that we bring into our, our life now that can come from traumas or can come from you know, memories or, or whatever that, that, we, that we bring with us now. And so that's sort of how I'm, in, how I'm interpreting their presence in the work. Um, they, I liked this, I've got in the background of this middle one here, this, this is the first, one of the first times I had the windows as well, where I was, I was, it's not quite a window into another world, but it's starting to expand her space and create like a bit of a productive zone, but one that's kind of getting a little bigger. And even in the one in the top, there's a, there's a bit of a space around her, and there's a, a moon right there, and so she's, she's kind of letting herself sit in this, this sort of a moonlit space that feels peaceful to her. Uh, there's a reference to the wheelchair, if you can see on the wheels on the side, just by way of kind of sticking it in there while I was processing the things that I was, that I was dealing with. And this one called Pink Rain, I think it is. Yeah, it's called Pink Rain. And um, I'm not sure what to say with this about this one. I mean, there's there's more of these layers. I'm playing a little bit with some florals. I'm playing a little bit with this this idea of pulling in, moving away from just abstract form and realism, and, and kind of applying things like an umbrella. You know, can I apply that or grass? And seeing if the, if applying them would be um, really interesting. And one of the things that I do when I make art is that. 
I tend to approach everything that I make with a question. You know, can I? What happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? And so a lot of the work that I do will, will be this based on that, based on a question like that. This one was what happens if I apply if I implied something without making it look highly realistic, but allowed it to be there. Will it tell enough of the story? Will it feel still really poignant? This piece um, is one of the one of the ones I did towards the end of the year as well, and I called it Chaos and Order. I'll let you get in on it if you like real quick before I come up to it. It was my attempt to create a larger image that was inspired by one of the smaller collages where the connection was a bit less obvious. So as I've shown you before, I've done some of the smaller collages and then I've kind of blown it up into this sort of medium-sized painting. And, uh, but it was very obvious that that, that came from a larger, sorry, that smaller study and that because they, they look very similar to each other. Maybe more detailed, but just very similar. So for this piece here, I wanted to use, um, can you just see if I can, Pull you to the deck. If you don't mind scanning over to that piece at bottom of seven there, that's the one that I used to reference. It was kind of my base, and I decided to springboard off of that piece and create this one here. So this is when I was wrestling with, um, as the title suggests, this idea of chaos and order and mind to control the environment that I was in. And so one of the things that I learned through the process of losing control of my body is how much I how much I need control, or how much I love control. And so I was butting up against this, this, this idea of realization and, and fight for control that I didn't always get to have. And so this piece was just kind of exploring the aspects of control that, I, that maybe I'm fighting for, but also the aspects of uh, chaos and whether maybe that can be invited, whether that can be valuable. So you'll see these different points of reference in the piece that might refer to chaos or order. So for, for me, some of the parts that refer to order might be the, the realism of the face, of the hands, of, 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 of the figure, that something that you expect to see that's more realistic and predictable. I've got her holding what I felt was like a remote control, so something that she's trying to use to kind of control or shift something. And I have these, um, these I guess they'd be editing tools on the side here, um, which coincidentally is my son's favorite part of the whole show, is the editing tools. So I should just take him a screenshot of editing tools and put it up for him or something. But I put them on the side um, when I was working on my painting. One of the things I do in my process when I'm painting is I'll, I'll work on a piece for a while and I'll get stuck. And so I'll put it in my editing program and I will wrestle with different things and try different ideas and strokes and see what I think so that I'm not risking the painting if I feel like it's getting precious or something. And so what happened this time is I put the piece in and my editing tools popped up on the screen on my, on my program and I realized that there was a strong connection between the editing tools and that sense of control that I was working on so I felt like I should put it into the piece. And ever since then, whenever I had my piece on my computer, I thought the editing tool was up because I could see it on, <laughs> on my computer so it was a bit of a fight with that. So I've got the control ref reference there, there, and there. And with all these hands that are kind of gripping and holding and moving, there's that sense of trying to, to wrap around something and figure out how to manage it or master it. And then I'm also, I've got that sense of chaos where, you know, part of her fear that is maybe realistic is breaking apart into the part that's not, not so controlled. I have some, if you can see, probably the light is catching a bunch of the texture. What I did is I smeared a bunch of paint on here first that, because I wanted that texture to peek through and influence that the other layer. I've got the sort of monstrous form in the background that's part of part of that chaos. And actually the whole painting, if you if you are able to see it in person or up close, there's all this texture because this used, this is off of a fatal painting already. So it's in itself is is my embracing of I guess chaos or things falling apart by taking something that didn't work and saying, well, I guess I'll send it off and try something else. So there's all this texture left over from, I think this is actually the third painting that I, that I tried on this piece before I liked it. So there's all this layers of stuff underneath that are showing through from things that just failed. And I guess in some ways an analogy for life, right? We can't control everything, but sometimes we just have to pull what we have and use, use it the best we can. Um, I've got 
that, what else is there for chaos? I mean, there's, a, there's all the mystery of what's happening. There's some spray paint and there's some weird lines that don't really make sense and there's all this texture and there's this kind of stuff that just is not really, isn't anything, just part of that idea of chaos that I was trying to implement where what I was trying to do and what I'm trying to do is come to terms with the fact that both exist, that we have to, going forward, that I have to learn how to figure out how to embrace both the both the chaos or the things that are out of my control and find a way to make it work as well as the things that are in my control and, uh, and my tendency to want to control it. So, so it's kind of coming to terms with the struggle, I guess, not between them. And then we have one more corner here. studies up there and these are some of the ones that I that I did and painted with some of those there. Um, this one is over there as well but a larger version. This is also painted on a failed painting that I sanded off and then I textured and then I built on top of. And I like that I like that there's this history behind some of the work. I got some parts where I'm trying to pull in again some of the texture where I was playing with things being ripped apart and there's some sand and texture where things are kind of broken or less less controlled, less able to be controlled or, or predictable. And I've got, what I've tried to create in all of these figures, and you'll see, I hope you'll see them in, in some of them, is a sense of dignity. There's um, sometimes there's this sort of, this almost royalty implied to certain shapes or that are there, or um, this kind of this, this outfit that's sort of hinted at behind the neck, which is part of the, the outfit. And it's, part, it's probably there to imply this sense of dignity that's there, that I think that just because, let's think if I can word this properly, in the midst of struggle, because we all go through things that are hard, um, we don't, I think that there's, there's dignity in it, there's a sort of a sense of this good enoughness that, that I've come to embrace as part of life and part of living and being in a body. And so I try to put that into the work, that it's not like, somebody's struggling and things are hard and everything's awful, but that there's this sort of this dignity in the struggle and that's what it means to live and, and to fight through. Um, this piece over here called Shadow is actually a refer uh, is a blow up version of one of the ones we talked about earlier. And it's the other piece I have where there's this resin window kind of pocket in here where you can see through that little hand if you wanted to to the back. And again, it's just a, a, a reference of that, that sense of something. It's almost this internal self. I imagine that kind of the red arm is part of like the internal aspect of oneself, you know, reaching out and either embracing themselves or wrestling themselves or trying to figure out what they want to do with this part of themselves that's there. And this is kind of a shadow to imply this other part of them that's kind of coming along for the ride. This piece here that's called Reaching is the one that's probably the most overtly, um, I can't think of the word here, but it's, it's the one piece I did when I was really wrestling with this idea of whether or not I would be out for my own good or whether I'd be out to kind of, in the midst of the hard thing that I was dealing with, whether I was going to attack myself or hurt myself or, or beat myself up for not being able to do things that maybe normal people could do, you know, or whether I could find a way to, to take care of myself. So this piece is just kind of, um, I made it as I was realizing how how hard I could be on myself and, and not just myself but how all I, I've noticed a lot of us are like that right when we don't meet the standards that we think that we should meet what do we do do we lash out on ourselves and is that really is that really helpful and this last piece here we haven't talked about is called six and I call the six because I've got six arms on her, six hands. And I've had people comment on, on hands and how hard they are to paint. And I really like painting hands. I think I'm a bit of a sucker for punishment, but also once you've figured out the structure of them, it's quite fun to make them. So it was um, in the process of, of painting this piece, I just had a lot of fun with finding all the structure of the knuckles and the hands and the shapes. and moving them around and trying to get where the, the form turned and, and it was just quite rewarding. So I, I like that sort of the wrestling that she was doing with herself, the kind of shifting, the squirming, the fighting, 
Um, yeah, that, that's, that's about that. watching uh -huh. as well Hi, <laughs> and she um, said that she missed the part about the bark we were having some freezing issues we were having I'll come so you can we were having some freezing issues okay. so um, Melanie said she missed the part about the bark okay. and she's curious how and why you choose to use these unique materials Sure. I mean, that particular one was a bit of an experiment. So it's part of when I'm collaging, I'll try to pull in things to keep myself on my toes. So it's a little bit about experimentation, a little bit about intuition, a little bit about seeing what happens if, like I mentioned, I'm always asking that. So the bark was just a piece that I had that I thought, I'm going to see what happens if I add this. But it ties in with a lot of like a, different elements throughout the whole show, where I'm pulling in different parts of nature and having them either nature kind of growing out of them, you know, having the wings or animal parts being part of them, or coaxing out a plant or being with, with ferns or, or grasses here and there. It's kind of just a, another aspect where I'm pulling in that sense and I'm imagining that this, this figure has a place in the, the natural world. So I'm, I'm playing with that, with that piece. Um, you spoke online recently um, about this work being a way for you to learn to welcome back some of the parts of you that you had exiled. Mm -hmm. um, now that this body of work is complete, um, how are you finding? Was that <laughs> that so process, so the learning? Everything about myself now. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, <laughs> but, I'm just you know, were you able to? Yeah. Welcome yeah. back to yeah, learn. To learn. I'm learning. I'm learning to to understand that there's parts of me and there's also parts of other people. It's not just me. I'm, I'm aware that this is, this is a, a broad way of um, behaving that we think there's parts of us that we have to exile or remove or, or can't look at or can't allow in. And so, so I do find that through the work, I'm I'm learning to. But I'm almost imagining what it would be like to do it, and I'm I'm, I'm acting out by creating these pieces with these these. Parts embraced. I'm actually actually doing it. it. It feels like I'm almost like acting the part until I get like fitted to make it or something. You know. <laughs> and also, you mentioned um, facing the part that makes you human. Mm -hmm. Did you find that you were able to embrace that as well? I think that what makes us human is all of this mess. Um, and so, by creating this body of work. I am, I believe, facing the part that makes us human because, or makes me human, because I'm, I'm acknowledging that we're more than the flat thing that we see in the grocery store, or we see, some, we see someone for coffee, that there's all this layer of complexity to, to other people and to ourselves, and so by creating this work, I'm, I'm seeing it, and I'm welcoming it, and embracing it, and learning how to make space for all these different parts that kind of somehow manage to come along. And um, one thing I noticed, but I didn't hear you speak about it, sure. and I may have missed it um, running back and forth, was uh, wings show mm -hmm. up quite frequently mm -hmm. in the uh, work. I'm not sure if you referenced that. I mentioned it a little bit, but I haven't talked about it, but I'm still figuring that out, actually, because I'm making some new work in my studio right now that turns out has some more wings in it. They keep kind of these feathers and wings are merging in, in the next kind of grouping of work. And I mean, for a while I had this, um, I had this, not obsession, but commitment <laughs> to learning more, of, of, to getting some birds and wings and studying them, because I love this sort of this sense that they were, you know, this idea of rising above things and, and moving past things and her wings kind of, I've always wanted to fly, who has never wanted to fly, right? So I dream of flying. So part of it is um, referencing that freedom or that sense of, of movement, and part of it is um, that animalistic kind of bringing us back to the nature. And part of it, I'm not sure. It's just kind of coming up, and I'm going to find out what it means. We'll see. 
Okay, you've got some lovely comments. I have um, some lovely comments. Yes, is it Nora says congratulations on your wonderful show. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and emotions with us through your fantastic art. Sending you blessings and lots of energy and compassion to create more artworks. Thank you. Um, now, I also noticed on Instagram that you have started, that this is leading to a new body yes. of work. <laughs> and that you've started working on a new piece already. Yes. It's actually inspired by the piece that we talked about earlier with all the dragonflies in the landscape. And this idea, of, uh, this whole show is mostly these figures in their own internal spaces. This kind of contemplation and trying to create a space where these figures can actually come out in the world. So my next body of work, I think, seems to be, will be having these figures interacting with and coming out into the world. At the moment, they're on mountaintops. Let's see what happens. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to go back to um, uh, you were talking about the layering and the mess. And, um, do you want to elaborate on that a little more? Because it wasn't, I think it was more than just in reference to the collage. Sure, sure. Let's see if I can, if I can expand on that better. I think what I noticed, um, I think it, it actually came as a direct result from when I first was in a wheelchair and I was very obviously sick. And there was all these wonderful people who, who saw me and, and cared and I loved that about them. But I ended up noticing that all I ever ended up talking was about, about was the fact that I was sick. And I noticed the human tendency that we all have to flatten people in, into what we can see, which I think is just a natural instinct. Um, but I was wrestling to be seen as an artist and as a mother and as many other, as a friend and all these other things, not as somebody who was you know, disabled, for example. And so, a lot of these, these works are coming out of this space of trying to maybe fight for, um, to kind of argue that there's a lot more depth and um, aspects that are in a, in a single person than just what we can see. Uh, there's all these parts of us that I notice that wrestle with each other. So sometimes, you know, there's a part of you that wants the cake and the part of you that doesn't want to have the cake and they're fighting it out. <laughs> there's a part that wants to talk to somebody and the parts that are mad, mad that you would and they're fighting it out. And I, I felt all these tensions and, and all these emotions and all these feelings and I'm carrying all this part of my past and I'm just aware that there's all this stuff here and they're not all behaving, you know? They're all kind of just out there. And I felt like it was, it was missing something by just being the external self that I felt like if I could make them, if I could show more of these layers and hint at some of these things that maybe I know something about but maybe some things I don't know about or these parts that are kind of messy and confusing or, or angry or whatever, that it might be a more realistic portrait of a person than it would be if they were just like this. And so I was having some fun exploring that, um, exploring that with this work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Amy. Um, Star, have you seen any new questions come up? No, just lots of uh, amazing. amazing comments. I'll go read those. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they won't be missed. Yeah, have a glass of wine tonight and read all these. You'll feel awesome. Um, so uh, then I guess for this evening, we will say thank you for being here. Sure. Um, it's been such a joy to have you um, interact with the art and tell us about it. It makes a huge difference in mm -hmm. how people um, relate to it, I yeah. think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm so grateful for everyone who came out and wanted to, who were just curious about the work and you said all the nice comments. So thank you so much for coming and thanks for hosting me. I appreciate that very much. Um, so we will, um, I think, say goodbye for this evening and thank everyone uh, for coming and being a part of this artist talk. The exhibition still has a couple of weeks to run, um, actually three. Three weeks. No, two, two. February 16th. Yeah. So yes, over two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I hope that um, you'll all have a chance to come visit it in person. And if not, I've posted a link to the digital gallery in the comments. So you, if you're from far away, and I know we had a couple of viewers from, from away, yeah. that uh, you can 
have a look at the digital gallery. So thank you very much. We'll be back um, in a few weeks. Awesome. Good night.